My name is Bob Ramshell. I'm with the Tenant Company. And um, what we're going to be doing here today is kind of going over the, uh, the use and care of the Model 5680 scrubber from Tenant. And basically what we're going to be going over is setting the machine up, operating the machine, and then setting the machine up again for the next use. Okay? And then we're going to go over and kind of point out some of the best practices, uh, something um, Kind of points of, of interest, um, some some tips to reduce the uh, unnecessary service calls that have been experienced in the past. Okay, and then what we're going to do after the training is that we'll have you all come up here and kind of uh, maybe practice putting the brush on, taking the brush off, and things like that. And if you have any questions towards the end, feel free to ask. Okay. Also, as we turn the key on. Check the uh, battery for serviceability on the battery. Runtime on the battery on a full charge, they should be able to get two and a half hours on an actual uh, charge on the machine. Two meter over here, you've got green lamps, amber, and then red. They'll work as you as you operate the machine. It'll work through the green lamps to the amber, and then finally into the red. Okay. If you operate the machine, it goes into the red. The last slash or hash mark on the red will actually start blinking. That will tell the operator that basically there's not enough amps left in the batteries to continue running the machine. Now what may happen at that point is that the scrub deck may retract back into the uh, transport position involuntarily. Uh, the back motor might involuntarily turn off as well. But it will leave you enough juice and amperage in the batteries to get the machine from point A to point B. Very, very simple controls that you have with the 56A. First of all, it's key operated, so you do need a key to operate the machine. My recommendation is that there's a spare key that goes along with the key, um, that they separate the two keys and put one up as a backup. So you've got four fuses. One represents a brush motor. Uh, two of them represents because you get two brush motors. And then the other two uh, represents the brush motor. I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, drive motor, which should not go out. And then the back motor. If there's something lodged up in the back motor, or if it has to come in contact with any, any uh, uh, moisture or liquid, it may trip the circuit breaker on the back motor, but primarily what you're probably going to come in contact with or, or, or experience is that one or both of the brush motor circuit breakers are going to trip, okay? And that primarily is going to stem from maybe hitting something on the floor that's protruding from the floor, maybe a foreign object that's going to actually um, put more resistance on the brush which in turn is going to heat up the circuit breaker, which is a safety feature, which is going to prevent the uh, brush motor from burning out. And that's what you'll have. You'll have one of the, um, the um, circuit breakers will actually trip. One of the brushes is going, and the other one's not. The best thing to do after resetting the circuit breakers is the first thing you want to do is just shut the machine off in the off position, let the circuit breakers cool off. Right now, the reason why they trip is because they heat it up. We want to let them cool off maybe five or ten minutes, come back to the machine, turn the machine back on, and then go ahead and re-trip the circuit breakers. So, you've got an hour meter here. The hour meter just records the actual runtime on the machine. So when you're transporting the machine from point A to point B, it's not going to uh, register on the hour meter. Only when you have the scrub deck down, the squeegee assembly down in the back motor is learning you're actually scrubbing the floor, and it's going to actually um, uh, register on, on the hour meter, okay? We do have an adjustment for the console. You can call it tilt steering if you want, okay? But this gives the um, ability for the operator to be able to safely and ergonomically uh, adjust the console based upon the height of the individual. So, when we're ready to scrub the machine, there's only one button that you really want to concern yourself with, and that's the button here on the right-hand side, okay? When I press this button, the scrub deck is gonna go from the transport position like it is now, down to the floor, okay? Nothing's going to happen until that point, okay? Uh, the handles here control everything. Once the scrub deck is down to the floor, okay, when you turn the twist grips here, that, that engages the propulsion of the machine. The machine's going to start moving forward. The brushes are going to start turning, okay? And water is going to start being dispensed from the machine. When the operator releases the handle, everything stops. The machine stops, the brushes stop, and water stops dispensing from the machine. One of the devices that you have on the console pa uh, panel here is to, is to increase or decrease the amount of flow or solution that goes on in the machine. Okay? Uh, you have the ability to be able to increase by moving the, the stick on the, uh, on the 
device forward, okay, and to decrease it by pulling it back, okay. I'm going to press that button. As you can see, the scrub deck will go down to the floor, okay. The handle here on the right hand side actually lowers the squeegee assembly from the transport position to the scrub mode. So when I lower the, the handle here, okay, the vac motor is going to come on automatically. Now, as I slowly twist, turn the twist grip, okay, slowly turn the twist grip, it's going to engage the brushes, and of course the machine is going to move forward. You may have experienced on the wet cell lead acid batteries that were in the previous machines, um, where you actually had to maintain the water level inside the batteries. Uh, during the charging process, um, some of the water might have, uh, or condensation might have um, spilled over into the tray, which accounts for probably some of the smells um, coming from the battery tray. Okay, that should be eliminated now with the maintenance free batteries that are are being utilized in the new 5680s. So there's no need to maintain, uh, they're, they're actually sealed. So any water that previously came out of the wet cell uh, lead acid batteries um, is gonna be um, eliminated by the, by the sealed um, maintenance free batteries that are in all the new machines. Another item you wanna check is the filter for the back motor, the air intake to the back motor. And this kind of protects any foam or solution that may make it up into the um, the intake area here in the back motor, okay? So this filter here, it's kind of like an air filter, just protects the particulates uh, from going into the back motor. You want to take the filter out periodically, and this is going to be part of your regular maintenance. But for setting the machine up, we want to make sure that the operators know to put a clean service of the filter uh, into the slot here so they can properly protect the back motor, okay? So that's another thing we want to check. It's too many times where it gets lost, it gets removed from the machine, and again, only bad things can happen at that point. Okay, so kind of emphasize to them that they need to check that there's a serviceable filter inside the slot over here to protect the back motor. Okay. One of the most important parts of the machine is the recovery system, and included in that is the squeegee blade assembly. You can see right here on top of the machine, uh, the serviceable squeegee assembly assures that you're always going to get a clean, dry, safe surface behind the machine. Um, again, if you're not getting a clean, dry, safe surface behind the machine. And something's probably going on uh, with the squeegee assembly that needs a little bit of attention. Uh, a big uh, priority for Home Depot is to always make sure uh, the most important part is that there's always a safe uh, surface behind the uh, behind the machine when it's utilized. And um, this is going to uh, this is going to not only prevent or limit or minimize the amount of slip and fall accidents that occur during the year because of water that might have been possibly left behind the machine because of an unserviceable squeegee assembly. But loosen them. And the, the, two, uh, the two knobs here, okay, go into these two slots, and you want to push it all the way forward. And then just hand tighten them. Now, Another thing you want to check for, okay, taking the hose out and checking it for any nesting there, any debris that might have forced its way up into the air intake, that's going to greatly reduce the efficiency of the vac motor. Again, it's going to be tough to get a nice clean dry surface behind the machine, so definitely want to check that out, okay, and also the nesting inside this, the um, squeegee assembly. So what we're going to ask all the operators to do is go ahead and spend a little bit of time after they use the piece of equipment. Um, to take the squeegee assembly off and go ahead and inspect the squeegee assembly and the squeegee blade for serviceability. What you'll see is the inside edge here, this, this brand new squeegee blade right here, so it's got a, um, it's got a very, very um, sharp edge right here. But over a period of time, because it's going to be making contact with the cement floor, it's going to become worn and beveled. Okay? What's, what you may experience is that from the outer edge, because of the pitch of the squeegee, squeegee blade, it's going to become beveled from the ends on both ends, and it's going to work its way towards the center of the machine. I would say when the beveled part of the squeegee blade becomes between four to six inches long from the end of the squeegee blade, that it's probably time to rotate the squeegee blade um, 
to give it another service of the latch. And it's very easy to do that. I also want to mention that everything that the machine, uh, that, the, that the operator needs to do to the machine requires no tools. Okay, so this, this includes the squeegee blade assembly, cleaning the machine out, taking the brushes on and off of the machine, okay? So anything that does not require or, or requires a tool for the, um, for the repair or adjustment on the machine, I'd say a service call probably needs to be uh, made um, for that deficiency. Yeah. So they also can take a second to be able to clean the inside edge here because there will be a little bit of dirt that's going to accumulate between the squeegee blade and the end of the end of the, um, the assembly here, okay? So make sure that they have a rag there that they can wipe that down. You're going to see two black knobs on both ends of the, um, of the squeegee blade assembly. And just by loosening the black knobs here, okay, that's going to free up the tension of the metal band that's, that is securing the line of tech squeegee blade. And this is going to give the operator access, again, to, to remove that band and give them access to rotate the squeegee blade assembly. Once the band is removed, then you can have access to be able to take the squeegee blade off of the um, assembly. Okay, And the squeegee blade has four usable edges, the two on the top and the two on the bottom. So the, so the operator can basically um, rotate the squeegee blade assembly and then go ahead and uh, uh, flip the, uh, flip the um, blade around to use the other two edges on the other side of the, the squeegee blade. Okay, once the squeegee blade has been rotated and then tighten up the black knobs. Give it plenty of uh, pressure on the metal band to secure the squeegee blade in the, in the right position. They also can take a second to be able to clean the inside edge here because there will be a little bit of dirt that's going to accumulate between the squeegee blade and the end of the end of the, um, the assembly here. Okay, so make sure that they have a rag there that they can wipe that down. When they get to approximately uh, they've used, already utilized three edges of the squeegee blade. They've got one left. That's probably the time to go ahead and order another squeegee blade in because chances are by the time uh, they're going to need to rotate that out, they're going to need to replace that with a fresh surface of the squeegee blade. Okay? okay. And then what we're doing here, we're going to turn this over and we're going to check the squeegee blade for any damage. We're going to check up the serviceability and see if there was any damage during the operation of the machine. Okay. Certain things might have happened. It might have come in contact with a piece of metal, um, which might have, um, which might have ripped the squeegee assembly. Unfortunately, once the squeegee assembly, line attack squeegee blade is, is split or or torn, it's not serviceable any, at that point. So we need to replace that. Okay. The best time to figure that out is after the machine's been used, not when you're setting it up to to clean it again. Okay. So that's why we're asking the operators to definitely spend time after they operate the machine to check these things for serviceability because they'll have a whole 24 hours until the machine has to be done again. That'll give them a little bit of time to be able to get any replacement brushes, squeegee blades, or anything that needs to be done to the machine or put on the machine uh, for their next use. As you can see, uh, even this machine's basically been in use for about a, a week. Uh, and the brushes as well, the brushes came with the machine. You can see the bristles of the brushes going in one direction. Okay, so one way to um, offset that, okay, to prevent uh, that from happening, is to rotate them um, on each side of the, the uh, scrub deck. We're going to utilize this little window right here, and what that's going to do is going to give you a proper view inside to the hub that you're actually going to be attaching the brush to. Okay, so this should be closed during use, but you want to open that up again when you're uh, putting the brush on the machine or taking it off. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the brush up underneath the machine, okay, and I'm going to force the brush up onto the hub, okay, um, until it snaps on. You'll hear a metallic click. It'll snap onto the hub, and then I'm going to kind of jiggle the brush a little bit to make sure that it's attached properly to the uh, brush hub, okay? So you want to force up, hold it up with one hand, 
and then kind of lift it up with the other, okay, until it properly seats uh, into the gimbal mount, well, the brush motor properly uh, seats itself in the, in the gimbal mount, okay? But as I mentioned, as you can see, that the, um, the brush is able to set some movement there, okay? But it's not falling off the brush, okay? Then you can close the window, okay? What we do not want to do is have any of our operators just assume that there's a serviceable brush on the machine, okay? There's only bad things can happen at that point. At that point, uh, they start scrubbing the floor, they put the brush head, the scrub deck down to the floor, and that might do some serious damage to the brush motors, okay? So just to kind of reiterate, um, or kind of overemphasize that to make sure that the operators always check that the brushes are on the scrub deck, okay? Each brush motor turns in the opposite direction towards inwards, okay? So they counter rotate. So one of the brushes going one way and one of the brushes going the other way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask the operators uh, at, while they're cleaning the machine out and taking the brushes off of the machine, okay, that they recognize this after they're cleaning it and put it back on the machine in the opposite uh, position, okay? So that means they're gonna take the right brush, put it over here on the left-hand side and then taking the left brush, okay, and putting it on the right-hand side. What that's going to do is it's going to reduce the direction or reduce the premature wearing of the brush. Okay, and again, what that will do is will maximize the life of the brushes. Okay, and that will significantly cut the um, the added cost on the replacement brushes throughout the year. And we do have a debris tray with the 5680. Okay, and that's this item right here. Okay, so at the end of the shift of operating the machine, you're going to have a, probably depending on what aisles you went through, okay, you're going to have some some particulates and debris inside the tent, uh, the debris tray, okay. So we're going to take the debris tray, we're going to take it over into a trash can, clean it out, make sure that we're running this underwater and cleaning it out. Che again, checking it for serviceability, always marry it back to the machine, okay. Uh, we're not put the operators are not putting this debris tray back in with the machine, okay. The probability of it being uh, separated from the machine and lost goes up dramatically, okay? So make sure a part of checking the machine out, we take the debris tray after they clean it out and put it back at the end of the slot where it goes, which is right here in the, the recovery tank, okay? The recovery hose is, I'm gonna go ahead and bring the machine around again. Okay, the recovery hose, of course, if all the dirty water that we're picking up from the floor is gonna go through this baffle right here and it's going to toss back into the um, into the uh, recovery tank, okay? Now, what you may see, experience, is that the inside edge here of the hose may become um, debris and dirt, may settle, and that's going to prevent a nice seal going on with the, with the edge here. So you want to clean the inside edge of the hose, and you also want to take something, uh, some people have like maybe a little paintbrush or something like that, that they can go ahead and dig out any, any micro debris that might get uh, uh, lodged into the, uh, into the crevice here, okay? But they're doing that and take a little bit of time to do that. That's going to ensure a nice seal with the baffle motor here, or the baffle hose here, okay? Which again is going to increase the efficiency of the back motor, okay? Now, another thing we want to do is we want to check that the inside uh, solenoid valve uh, switch is serviceable and played. Now we do have a, a switch that's inside the recovery tank um, that's actually a safety feature for the vac motor. What it's designed to do as the recovery tank fills up, the foam is actually going to rise up to the top and it's actually going to float the switch up here into the upward position. Once it's switched up in the upward position from the excessive foam, it's going to automatically turn the vac motor off. And this is so that foam, again, doesn't make its way through the, um, the filter into the vac motor. You will need to fill the solution tank on the 5680 scrubber. Open up the lid, fill up approximately one inch from the top of the tank, and you will have 30 gallons of water. The order would be, empty out the clean water first, lift the tank out, okay? These are your hoses right here, okay? I'm going to lift the tank out, okay, 
and here it's going to give me access to be able to take a take a hose, okay? Because remember, the hose is towards the back of the machine, and what I'm be, I want to be able to get a hose nozzle inside this this area right here, okay? And clean out and push everything back towards the towards the end there. I'll put the hose directly into the the solution tank without getting any solution out because that that moisture is still going to make it down into the battery tray, okay? But again, it shouldn't have any odor like the um, lead acid batteries did with the battery acid spilling over into the um, into that compartment. And then I would say probably uh, hadn't operated the machine for about five hour elapsed time. The battery is going to have to be re recharged, okay? So this is the port for the battery charger. Always remember that it's great plug to great plug. Gray plug usually represents a 36 volt system, okay? And a red plug actually represents a 24 volt system. So the, basically the general rule is gray to gray, red to red. Okay, we never want to marry a gray plug with a red plug. That's because the charger and the batteries and the amperage and the batteries are not going to line up. Wiping down the machine should be the last thing they do with the machine. After they've done and checked everything serviceability that comes in contact with the floor the hoses, um, also wiping the batteries down. I have them spend a little bit of time cleaning the machine, general cleaning of the machine, wiping it down for any marks that they might have picked up during the operation of the machine. The squeegee, uh, I'm sorry, the, the scrub deck right here, uh, a big part is wipe this down too, okay? It's going to be much easier to clean it on a regular basis starting right now mm -hmm. than trying to come back six months from now trying to clean, clean six months of dirt and debris on the machine, okay? We want to try to make sure that the machines look cleanliness and, and um, um, operational, okay? So part of uh, the ask that we're going to be asking the operators is to, again, take a little bit of time and wipe the machine down. Um, and also what that does is it gives them familiarity with the machine uh, as they're wiping it down to inspect for any, any possible damage or something that doesn't look right, okay?